UAP or airborne objects that when encountered cannot be immediately identified. With regard to the importance of transparency, the department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots in the west. Oh my gosh, dude. U.S. Navy personnel recorded what appears to be triangles, some flashing. The video was taken through night vision goggles with a single lens reflex camera. Well, I, was, I mean, it's a pretty high profile incident. I, I, I don't claim to be an expert. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, who else is doing it? There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show, UFO We Want to Know. This is uh, March uh, 9th, 2024, going through. we got a lot of uh, photos to show you. Before I begin, I as always do, this is dedicated to those who have been ridiculed, uh, made fun of, and dragged through the media for the last 76-plus years. Um, so we got uh, uh, 18 photos to show you, and so let's start that run right now. As you can see here, we have an anomaly, and this was discovered in Texas in 1936, London, Texas to be exact. It was a hammer embedded in a limey rock crustacean, um, and this is very interesting because of the fact that this, uh, this hammer uh, is estimated to be 400 million years old. It is six inches long. And it consists of 96.6% iron and has not rusted since its discovery. When's the last time you've seen iron that didn't rust? Next photo. Um, before I go into this, the, the question would be, uh, how did the crustaceous period rock become six miles below the Earth's surface? And uh, that's an anomaly in itself. Um, this uh, particular object, I'm sure that many people have seen it before. It was, it's been in the news uh, quite a bit uh, in the past, uh, and just recently it popped up again. Uh, this is a Roman anomaly, uh, an ancient artifact that uh, has puzzled historians and archaeologists for centuries. The mysterious object is made of bronze or brass. Uh, still, they still haven't come to a conclusion on which one and is shaped like a 12-sided um, uh, petrohedron, and uh, hence its name. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a true anomaly. They still don't know what it was for. This uh, chain was found in a lump of coal, and it was uh, said to be millions of years old. They still haven't been able to give us a, a direct date on it. Uh, the chain itself... Uh, was uh, made of 10 carat gold, and it was uh, approximately 10 inches in length. So uh, the, the interesting thing about this is that this was inside a lump of coal. Next photo. Um, I, I got two versions of this chain because they weren't sure which one to, to show, but they show this one and the one previous, so... Um, going through both of them, uh, just in case you've seen it. Uh, they said it was embedded in the lump of coal. Now, coal is formed, uh, as you, you may know, it takes millions, millions of years for coal to form. And uh, they still haven't come to a conclusion of how this uh, got into uh, the lump of coal. Next photo. This bell was another artifact that was in a lump of coal. And uh, interesting enough on this one here, uh, this bell uh, was found accidentally. It was a large uh, piece of uh, coal. It was dropped, it broke in half, and it revealed this uh, bell inside of it. Now, the, the Institute for Creation Research had the bell submitted to the lab uh, uh, at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, they're a nuclear... Uh, activ activity uh, analyst uh, revealed that the bell contains an unusual mix of metals. Now that in itself is, is kind of uh, interesting because 
um, let's go to the next photo. If you look at the top of this, this uh, it had this uh, odd shaped, uh, whether you want to call it a person or something, a winged person, they're, they're still not sure exactly what this uh, was. And they're still uh, debating on it even today. And uh, there's a lot of information coming out of um, coming out of uh, the scientific world about this uh, this particular bell because they said that um, it can it could not possibly have been in that in that uh, piece of coal. Next the photo. This is called the Sabu disc, and it's an ancient Egy Egyptian artifact from the first dynasty, C. 300 to 28 BC. It was found in 1936 in the north of the Sakura uh, necropolis. And uh, interesting enough on this, uh, they said it could be any, anything from a propeller to a some kind of a mixer for food or even for dirt, moving dirt. Uh, they haven't come to a conclusion on it. They're, they're still arguing about it. And it's, it's funny how uh, if one person thinks that it's this or that, they stick to their guns. But again, it's an anomaly. And uh, you take a look at it. Tell me what you think this is. This is an ancient artifact. It's not, not something that was just made a couple of years ago or a thousand years ago even. It was made probably uh, somewhere near four to 5,000 years ago. Next photo. And we're getting into the uh, uh, Dropa stones. And I have uh, quite a few pictures for you to show on this one. And the reason why is because there's so many images. And this particular one has got an, an, what looks like a gray alien on this disc. And uh, these were found all, all over China, 12,000 year, uh, some of them are 12,000 year old granite disc also. Next photo. That represent uh, uh, an encounter of an extraterrestrial crash landing on Earth. Uh, this is what the, there was a, a Chinese, uh, archaeologist and he said he broke the code and he he came to a conclusion that this is what they said that this craft landed crash landed on earth these were small people about three and a half feet tall and if today if you go to the same region where these uh, these stones were found you'll find that uh, there are people that are extremely short they're somewhere around four feet uh, they look like uh, regular Chinese people, but they're short in stature. Um, their blood type is also rare in that area. And I'll get into that in an upcoming video about rare blood types and uh, where these people are located. But on um, these particular ones here I'm talking about, there are all kinds of these stones out there. Uh, next picture. And some of them depict uh, what we think is, or I should say the scientists think, not me, uh, that are uh, the alphabet or number systems or even the the um, uh, uh, Milky Way galaxy, as you see, it, it, it goes into a circle into the center. And that's what they think this, this particular one is. Next photo. Now, there are several of these photos of, of um, this particular object. Uh, I wanted to show a couple of them. Uh, this one here is a little more yellower yellow and uh, it it depicts different items now there are some actual beings on, on displayed on this but there are symbols that are very similar to what people have said they've seen on UFO ships uh, isn't that ironic again this is these were over 12,000 years old 12,000 years old next photo and as you can see uh, you can they you can there's there's clumps of them and there was literally literally thousands of them. If you take a look at this, this particular uh, photo here, they come in different sizes. But what you can't see is these uh, granite um, uh, drop of stones also had very, very fine grooves on it. Unfortunately, uh, there's no uh, photos of the, of the grooves. There was one, but it was taken off the internet years ago. I have no idea why it was taken off the internet, but uh, it, it definitely show grooves on it and what happened they put it under a micro uh, microscope and uh, there were the grooves uh, this is what this uh, Chinese archaeologist claimed he read how he read the grooves I don't know 
I don't know if he read the, the hieroglyphs or hieroglyphs, whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure how he did it. Uh, there is a book out uh, in China that, that uh, has been banned uh, for outsiders to see. And um, it told all about how he came to that conclusion. So uh, I don't think we're ever going to know because, uh, as you may or may not know, the Communist Party does keep the, uh, the lid tight on uh, China itself. Uh, you can't even get the uh, internet. Um, uh, if you're in China, you can't go out of the internet, out of the country. It's impossible. Uh, they've got a shield over the, the whole country on, as far as that's concerned. So I don't think you're ever going to be able to, we're never going to be able to get that information unless they open up to the world. Uh, quite interesting about that. And the last uh, couple of photos uh, I'm going to show you is um, more. You can see this one here cracked. Uh, that one here was bronze. Uh, they think it was bronze, I should say, but um, as you can see, it's got a crack through it. And um, I understand that the one the archaeologists in China read was bronze. And maybe, who knows, uh, maybe he figured out a way to read it. And then the last photo we have for you on this, take a look at the, uh, the being in the bottom of that top one there. Look, look how it looks more like a gray alien. Uh, to the center of it, it is uh, depicting the sun. And this is a circular disk, and there is some writing just to the right of the being. That has never been deciphered, but those symbols have been seen on other spacecraft that people have witnessed. So I thought that was quite interesting to show you uh, for the first segment, because uh, for years and years and years, I try to read, read about these artifacts and they don't give a lot of information. There's a lot of debunking out there. A lot of um, uh, scientists will claim that they're uh, uh, misplaced uh, items and they weren't in coal and they weren't in crustaceous rocks or whatever it may be. Um, they're always going to have their version. And, but the items are there and they're there to be tested. So whether or not um, it, it's true or not, and, and I'm up in the air with it, but I'm a believer. And if people say they saw this, I believe they saw this. We'll be back after this message. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never-before-viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO we want to know and remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us. And on this uh, segment here, I want to get into a little bit about um, the United States and uh, the government and what they think about uh, UFOs. This is my take on what I believe the United States is trying to perceived as a non-threat. So let's go on to the first photo. Now a little bit of it's cut off, but um, uh, if you're familiar with this particular area, uh, this is uh, Maelstrom Air Force Base and Minot Air Force Base. And what these two um, uh, bases held were our ICBMs. And these are the ones that were pointed directly at the Russian Federation at the time. So, or as I say, uh, the, 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 the Russian um, objection, objectives to take out nuclear weapons. So whatever, whatever they were pointed at, they were, it was strategically set. Next photo. And here at, um, at the uh, uh, Minot Air Force Base, uh, we had, in 1966, 10 ICBMs shut down after a UFO flew over the, um, uh, the facility. Uh, there was a panic. Uh, having one UFO being shut down is bad enough. But when you have a set of 10 that are not connected to each other, remember, ICBMs are not connected to each other. They have separate launch facilities. They all were shut down. Next photo. Mouston Air Force Base, the second one. Now, the first one was in 1966. This was in 1967. 
10 ICBMs were shut down after a UFO flew over the facility. The people, uh, uh, the guards on top, panicked, calling down below, saying there was this orange ball glowing over the facility. They were, it was said that they shot down a beam into the silos, and they all started shutting down. Next photo. I want to show you something. They're 60 feet underground, these facilities where the uh, controllers are at. And now, according to uh, our Air Force specialists, uh, these silos um, are reinforced with concrete and other material, cement, um, but there's other material that they use for, uh, uh, to keep the penetration of a nuclear strike if they were to get lucky and have a nuclear strike hit, hit ground zero. It was supposed to be able to withstand it. So when they were trying to figure out how these ICBMs were being shut down, they were saying it's impossible. And the reason why it's impossible is because of the fact that these ICBMs are shielded. Well, evidently that shield didn't work because uh, within two years they shut down two, uh, two sets of 10 ICBMs, which is 20 altogether. Next photo. And uh, as you can see uh, from the Atlas, uh, Titan 1, Titan 2, and to the Minuteman, uh, there was, this is our development. As you can see, as it got, uh, they, they were getting bigger and bigger, and then they got smaller but more powerful. We're talking about megatons of destruction here. Next photo. And when you go to the Air Force bases around uh, the United States, uh, you'll see these um, uh, missiles. Uh, they're, they're, they're there just uh, for show. They're... These are, of course, not activated. And uh, if you ever go to an air show, you'll see a lot of these uh, uh, rockets uh, uh, in the Air Force bases as you as you walk through the grounds, especially when they have air shows. Next photo. These uh, here show the, of course, the Minuteman, and uh, this is what we are using today. Uh, these are high, highly technical rockets. These uh, rockets are our are really our, our deterrents from an aggressor who may think that uh, it's, it's time for the United States to step down as the top world power. Next photo. Now, we had a lot of, we had a lot of people who questioned uh, about the different projects, uh, such as uh, Project uh, Sign, or they call it Project Saucer. It was the official U.S. government study under under uh, the study of UFOs. Um, it was undertaken by the United States Air Force, and that was in 1948. Then we went to Project Grudge, and that was in 1949. They continued on with the Robertson panel. That was in 1952. Some of these uh, overlapped each other. Then went to the Condit Committee, and that was from 66 to 68, and that was a joke and a half. You ever read the Condon report, uh, this, uh, the head of the uh, Colorado uh, University, he uh, laughed at the thought that he was made to, to, to do this study, and he thought it was a joke. The next project was, of course, Project Blue Book. Now, Blue Book went from 1952 to 1969. And here's the interesting part about uh, that particular one. Uh, blue, as far as the... Uh, it, uh, the um, the organization itself, they said that uh, when they ended Blue Book, the reason why they ended it is because they felt there was no threat to the United States. And yet, in 1966 and 67, they shot they shut down 20 of our ICBMs, 20. Okay, and then two years later, they shut the program down. Does that make sense to anybody out there that they would shut down uh, a program when they've shut down 20 ICBMs? And there's no threat. That's our that's our line of defense in case we're attacked by uh, by the Russians or anybody else. So it doesn't make sense. And then the last was, uh, of course, as as everybody knows from recently in the TV, the All Domain um, Anomaly Resolution Office, well, they called it Arrow, and that in itself is a joke. I, I talked about that just the other day, and uh, uh, these people are incredible. They don't understand that. Uh, it, the, peop, the, the UFO uh, um, that we see flying over, of course, in my mind, in my eyes, they're not a threat. The United States and any other country who shoots at them, they're the threat. 
So next photo. So what we're going to do is I'm going to I got some pictures I want to show you, and um, I can't see my timer, so I'm going to have to go through this. I don't know how much time I got left. I'm going to run through these UFOs as fast as I can, um, just in case uh, I run out of time. But uh, if you look at this uh, UFO, um, I, ca I call this one here uh, the uh, submarine UFO. I caught this over Prump, Nevada, and uh, it was just three days ago that I caught this. And uh, in fact, uh, matter of fact, when I, when I, when I caught this UFO, uh, I can actually see something in the corner of my eye moving. Next photo. Closer up of it. Take a look at uh, what's surrounding it. You got light surrounding it. Next photo. Change the background a little bit. I wanted to, to see if I can get rid of that glow. I could not get rid of it. Uh, no matter which color I turn the background, uh, that's what I had in there. Uh, this is clearly a craft in the air. And uh, I, I got to be honest with you, it was quite large. Next photo. This is the second one that I found. It was in the clouds. At first, I thought it was a split in the clouds. And uh, it uh, looked like, um, uh, I call this a whale tail. If you take a look, we'll go to the next photo on it. It's a little bit larger. And it's, it's interesting that this UFO was floating. It was floating. Now, uh, the top of it never dissipated. No matter what I did with the software, it never dissipated. It, it stayed there, this shape. Doesn't it look like the end of a whale's tail? And that's why I call it that. But of course, it's not a whale's tail. Uh, it is a UFO. Uh, I've never caught anything quite like this before, but uh, nonetheless, there it was. This next photo here is even a closer up of it. And I got one after this one. But uh, if you take a look at this uh, UFO here, it, the, the dark part of it, the mass, um, whether or not that's the actual craft, and then it was coming down. So is that uh, like a, some kind of vortex it was leaving behind? It, it's, a, it's a really great question because we don't know, do we? These, are, these UFOs come in all shapes and sizes. This is the, the last photo of that craft. And, and, and what I did was I tried to do the softest software I possibly could. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to see if I can get some kind of a digital signature from the, from the leading edge. And uh, I didn't. Uh, this craft, uh, whatever, why it's shaped like that, I don't know. I and mean, whatever it was doing, um, it's, uh, it's beyond me. But, you know, ladies and gentlemen, um, the United States uh, uh, government and all governments so far that I've seen, not just ours, uh, and their scientists, uh, keep saying that there's nothing there. there there's nothing to see. And uh, it, I, I just recently I was watching a, a, a video and uh, we had these uh, uh, scientists who were claiming that uh, alien beings, no matter how far out in the universe they are, um, they have to follow the same laws of physics and mathematics as we do. And that's why they can't get here from there. That's an asinine thing to say. That's in human thinking. I don't care what people said. You can't actually believe that. If I'm capturing these craft all the time, how can they come out with this kind of, that kind of comment? How? It's impossible for them to think that they can get, they can't get here from there. It's ridiculous. They're thinking on human terms. In human terms, they're not going to get you to first base, as far as I'm concerned, because I've seen these craft go one, two, three, even 300 uh, 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 in, as far as mock is concerned, uh, I've seen some pretty fast ones. In uh, last week's segment, uh, I said they were going uh, Mach 200. I've seen some going faster than that. They were going so fast that even if we slowed it down 90% and I was in super slow motion, I could not get the UFOs, uh, at least not with the equipment that I have. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, the scientists can believe what they want to believe. But I'm going to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, 
they can get here from there. And they have done it for literally thousands of years and maybe even millions. We'll be back after this message. Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never-before-viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO We Want to Know and remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us for the uh, third uh, segment. I apologize for the last segment. I may have mumbled jumbled a couple of words. We had some technical difficulties. But I think we got that pretty much straightened out. I got uh, uh, two videos and 10 photos to show you on this segment. So let's get on with the, with the video. And as you can see, this object was floating around the atmosphere. We had some heavy rains and then some heavy winds here recently. And we had some really, really good uh, white clouds, very sharp, uh, uh, in front of the blue sky. As you can see, this object here was floating around, and near the end of the 17-second super slow motion, it disappeared under the cloud, but it was hovering there. Uh, this, the clock was actually moving at this time uh, for 16 and a half seconds. At the last second, it was already behind the clouds. Interesting that... Um, um, the UFOs were plentiful on this particular day. This was taken four days ago in Pahrump, Nevada. This was facing west of Pahrump. And as you can see, it darted behind the cloud. I'm not sure if it, I don't know, who knows, maybe it saw that I was videotaping it because it was just hanging around. It wasn't moving. It wasn't going up or down. It was just stationary. Now, when I looked at my uh, Times 40 magnifier, it was wobbling. Like you've heard people say that it seemed to be wobbling, like it was out of control. Well, this one here wobbled a little bit when I put it on the magnifier, so that's quite interesting. After this loop here, we'll go ahead and go to the first photo. And I put the arrow on it. Now, you'll notice that it's a little bit higher than when the video... Uh, what we did is we cut the video short because I didn't want you to have to sit there and, and watch 17 seconds of uh, uh, an object just sitting there. But initially, this is how high it was in the very beginning when I first took it. This is at the beginning of the video. So it was quite high. And um, But I wanted to, to let you know that isn't this interesting how I can get all these UFOs. Now, this is clearly not a bird. It's not a plane. Uh, because when you see the end of the, the uh, photos here, you're going to be able to see what this object actually looked like. Next photo. Starting to come in, isn't it? It's, it looks like the iconic UFO. Um, uh, interesting enough, I had seen a movie where this exact shape, and at the very, very last of these photos, you're going to see what I'm talking about, but this shape uh, came out in, in a movie. Uh, it was a documentary movie, and this is what it looked like. And, but I believe it was, it was back east somewhere. I believe, like, it may have been in like uh, Tennessee or Arkansas, but it was closer to the East Coast than it was the West Coast. Coast, And it looked really close to this one here. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Next photo, as we get closer in. Take a look at the, the left side of it. You got that kind of uh, sharp point. And then look in the back. It gives you like a drop off. I didn't cut it off. That's what it looked like. Now, re, re, uh, if this object was rotating, and uh, this is what it looked like, uh, I have no idea. When I was looking at my magnifier, it kept this particular shape, but it was going up and down from side to side. Very, very interesting. Now, I know that the, um, uh, the scientists uh, who study this uh, phenomenon, who claim they don't study it, uh, I can assure you they've seen this object before. Uh, because it um, has been seen before because I've taken it before. Now, whether or not they want to argue that point, this object is in our atmosphere. It is not some anomaly on my phone uh, from what these scientists are concluding. 
this object was in our atmosphere. Believe me, it was in our atmosphere. Next photo. Close up of it. Take a look at it. It's not going to change the shape. This object was in our atmosphere. I'm going to keep saying that because it really upsets the scientists out there. And I'm sure it doesn't make the, the government happy when they claim that uh, there's no so-called threat to the United States. Well, there, there is no threat to the United States if you leave them alone. Shooting them down is, is not a friendly way of saying hello. Next photo, and this would be the last of this one here. Um, I would like for you, the audience who has seen this UFO, write into me at UFO, we want to know at gmail.com. Tell me what you think this is. Because if it isn't a UFO, unidentified flying object, what do you think it is? And uh, for all the people who write to me, I write them all back. I've written everybody back who write to me. And let me know what you think this is. Uh, of course, I, if, if any, there's any comics out there uh, who write me, I don't care to write them back because I, I, don't, I don't play those games. I'm a serious ufologist. And I think of uh, looking at these things in a serious manner. I shouldn't call them things. These fantastic uh, vehicles in a serious manner. Uh, they're way ahead of us technologically. And um, as far as their mathematics and their physics are concerned, it's way beyond ours uh, to comprehend. And I'm talking about those so-called scientists who believe that uh, they have to follow the same rules of physics and mathematics that we do. It's, it's just ridiculous for them to, to claim that, and they should be embarrassed. Uh, they went to school to get their doctorate or PhD or whatever they may, they may have, and then they sound like school children, um, saying that they, they saw uh, uh, something going through the wall when there's nothing going through the wall. Uh, they act like kids uh, with an imagination uh, that is, uh, uh, I can only say, uh, childish. I wish they would stop talking about things that they know nothing about. They went to school to study uh, celestial objects, uh, but these objects are here on planet Earth. They're flying in our atmosphere every single day. Let's go to the next video. Another object in the sky taken the same day, a few days ago, and uh, this is a... Uh, a white object, but I want to put the arrow out, out there because I don't want you to confuse it with a cloud. Uh, this was not a cloud uh, at, in, in any way, shape, or form. And this UFO uh, simply was in the clouds. It never darted back and forth from the cloud here and there. It stayed there at, at the, from the, the whole time from the beginning to the end of the video. And uh, unlike the, the previous one, this one, of course, is... Uh, white in color, light, very light, very bright. Next photo. And I pointed out where it was located, just, just for you to see how far away this was. Now, when I showed you the video, I actually zoomed in as I did the previous shot. I zoomed in the video because it was so far away. Uh, the clouds were very, very high. Uh, and I, when I took this, this um, particular stop motion, I wanted you, you to see how small it was. And to give you an idea, when I go through the photos, I go up, across, down, across, down, across. I look at every single inch of this photo to catch something. When I, when I went past in the, near the middle of this one to catch this UFO, I spotted it pretty easy because I was using my magnifiers. And uh, had I not used it, I may have, I may have uh, missed this one here. I'm thinking it's part of the cloud. Next photo. Close up of it. And this is more or less what you saw in the video. And the next photo. A close up, trying to get rid of the cloud so you can identify this as not a non-cloud. As you can see, if you look close, uh, I didn't change the background. But yet, take a look at this. Uh, the object is light in color. And if you look, you can see a little darker blue surrounding it. I believe that's plasma. Now, when the UFOs are seen dark, they show light plasma. But it's still plasma. That's my belief. And um, just to get a little clarification, 
uh, people ask me, say, well, you know, you, you know, you said they were flying in our atmosphere, but they're not touching our atmosphere. Okay, they're in uh, uh, Earth, they're in uh, our skies, okay? And I'm, I'm not a scientist, so I'll explain it the simplest way I can. They're in our skies. They're flying where our jet aircraft are flying. But as far as the uh, air uh, uh, around it, uh, any particles, um, they're not touching the craft. It's like a shield around them within uh, Earth's uh, um, uh, atmosphere is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, I don't know how, how else to explain it other than uh, this craft does not touch. So like if it's raining real hard, the rain doesn't hit this craft. It bounces off some kind of magnetic shield, some kind of force field, uh, anti-gravity shield, uh, whatever you want to call it. But I believe the plasma that you see, let's go to the next photo, the plasma you see uh, is what you're seeing as far as the darkness. Uh, when you get a dark UFO or one that's going supersonic, uh, you see a lot of light flickering from that. I believe that's magnetic charge. Uh, as I said in previous videos, um, some people say that uh, they had witnessed UFOs on the ground. And th these are credible people who used to work at these uh, bases like Area 51, S4, uh, even Area 52, um, they claim that when these craft first take off, they have a thunderous electric charge underneath the craft itself. And I think that what these craft are doing is when they're ready to make a move on the craft, when it's ready to move, because they're surrounded by this magnetic field of sort, whatever it may be, I believe they sent out a huge pulse of uh, electricity uh, from the craft itself. Uh, now, in uh, some of these eyewitness accounts, it's just the bottom of the craft that shows this electrical charge. Next photo. And um, on some of the UFOs flying, when they're, say, they're going up in the air, uh, I've caught them on video, and this electrical charge is all around the craft, not under, just underneath it, but it's all around it. So uh, who knows whether or not this, uh, these craft uh, uh, work in different ways because not all of them are from the same uh, world that they come from. Uh, they may uh, have a different way of setting off that electrical charge. And uh, whether or not that's true or not, uh, I don't know because I've never been aboard one and as far as I know, and uh, I've never seen one take off. But I have seen documentaries where they actually show uh, the electrical charge underneath the craft. And uh, I want to make this point because of the fact that uh, when I was showing, I think like a month ago, I showed a, a craft uh, going from right uh, to upper left, and it was giving off a, a really magnetic charge. I mean, it was uh, pulsating. And uh, at first... When I first saw it, I kept thinking uh, my my maybe my phone is, is um, showing me something that's, that's really not there. But I went over that over and over and over again, and I came to the conclusion that this is getting off a charge that is getting this craft to move that fast. Because again, I was taking that one in super slow motion, and we had to slow it down 90%. And that's how we caught it going in our atmosphere. Um, I want to thank you for staying with me. And I got one more segment to go, and I hope you stay with us. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Joseph, the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never-before-viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO we want to know and remember, yes, they are out there. Thank you for staying with us in the last segment. I have uh, two videos and ten photos to show you, and then we have some information at the end. So let's begin with the first video. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to, this is a, a very interesting photo, a video of, uh, of what I took here. And the reason why is because this is right above my head. I took this 
the last time I was here, last week, in the studio, and I went outside and I caught this object. And I told my director, Mikey, that I was gonna put this uh, on the air, and I said, I caught a UFO flying over the facility here. And uh, I don't know if they believe me or not, but here it is. And uh, we're gonna loop it a couple of times, and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, show you what was flying over. And I think you're gonna find this UFO quite interesting. Now remember, this tower is extremely high. It must be, um, I don't know, maybe 100 feet in the air, but um, I was pretty close to it when I took it. Uh, again, we had some cloudy skies. It was taken a week ago, and it's not a bird. As you can see, when I sh start showing you the pictures after this loop, uh, we'll start zeroing in on this particular object. Um, now, I didn't show it, but there was more than just one of these UFOs. There was a clump of three UFOs uh, in a somewhat... Uh, uh, triangular shape uh, uh, just to the left of this. I didn't show them today, but uh, I wanted to show this one because it was a caught on video. Next photo. That's when it left the, uh, it was in between the wires, and this one it started to move to the left. And uh, this was uh, a joy for me because I kept saying to myself, uh, I'm going to get a video over this facility sooner or later. This is the very first time that I actually got something over the facility because every time I leave it, I take videos and photo just outside the facility. Next photo. Close up of it. And as you can see, it looks like a football, but this is a UFO. It's not a bird uh, because in when I was watching it on my optics, uh, there was no flapping, so it's clearly not a bird. And uh, uh, I had, uh, the reason why I'm saying that, I had a gentleman tell me, he said, well, that could be a bird diving down. Uh, no, it wasn't going down. It was going sideways from right to left. And when I watched it uh, on the video, it did not flap. It would just moved. Next photo. This is a close-up of it. I, I got one more after this. But I want you to, to notice that inside, it had a lot more density than... than uh, uh, around the whole shape. Uh, it was giving off uh, some uh, magnetic field, uh, some type of uh, surrounding. You can see light just around it. Next photo, and I believe this is the last. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is clearly a UFO flying in our atmosphere. This was flying over this facility. So whatever scientists want to say uh, that there is nothing to see, uh, obviously this was not that far up. I believe this is no more than 3,000 feet up in the air. That's my belief. Because I watched this video for over an hour, and I was trying to analyze, uh, could I possibly guess how far up this, this UFO was? And that's my belief. Next uh, video. Now, this particular one here, I had to darken it because this UFO was going uh, really fast. And uh, I've been told, well, you, maybe you shouldn't say Mach 200 because we don't really know. So I'll, I'll tell you that we, uh, we set this one, we, we closed in on this UFO and uh, because we want you to see it. It's passing the sun. It's going below it now. And this craft was going so fast that when I had it at regular speed, I, I kept missing it, so I slowed it down, uh, and I and I caught it here, and I darkened the, the the background so you can actually see it traversing. Now, as I said in previous videos, I usually uh, miss quite a few UFOs because I don't spend a lot of time anymore because I get so many of them. Uh, unlike these um, scientists who keep saying there's nothing there, well, I'm getting so many of these UFOs, I don't have time to to look at every single one of them. So if I don't see a UFO within four or five passes, uh, then what I do is I usually just uh, uh, eliminate them from my database and I go on to the next one uh, because I know that I'm, they're there. I know I'm going to catch them. But if I see an obvious UFO, something that's you know pretty close, flashing by like it showed last week's, uh, of course I'm going to keep them. But if I if I have a hard time finding UFOs, I'm, I'm not going to sit there like a stickler and keep going over and over and over. Okay, so after this loop, let's go ahead and go to the first photo.
And what I did was I stop motioned it when it when it passed the sun, and I'm showing you an arrow. That's how far away it was. Uh, uh, as I said before, I zeroed in on this video uh, to show the close up of this UFO. But if when you're looking at it from this vantage point, this is a, a very hard object to catch. Uh, next photo. A super close up of the sun and that UFO that was passing through its aurora. Uh, this gives you an idea how fast it was going. You can see it left a, a small uh, entrail behind it, but nonetheless, it was um, flying past the sun. You saw it for yourself. Uh, I have to do that uh, because if I don't do it, you're not going to be able to see what I'm seeing on television. Uh, when I go over a lot of this stuff, believe it or not, I go over it with my phone. I don't put it on my computer. I try to do everything with my phone. And uh, I have a 99% success rate. But uh, from time to time, you've heard me say, well, I've gone to my computer software and I've done it this way because maybe there's better optics. But uh, that's what I do to bring you the best I can. Now, this uh, next photo, I'm going to show you a close-up of it. And um, what I did, and I'm not showing it today, but I saw this object from on top of the, uh, the sun's view to the bottom, and it never changed the shape. I took about four different stop pictures, but I would be here all day showing you the same object, and I don't want to do that. Uh, a lot of these shows, they'll show one object like this particular one here, and they'll make an, an hour and a half show out of this particular photo. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to show you as many UFOs as I can. Remember, I took all these photos and videos the previous week before I came to the studio. So this gives you an idea of how many I get. Now, on an average, I'll, I'll get maybe 18 to 30 UFOs. Um, look at my, my numbers here. Uh, on average, about 18 to 30 UFOs. Uh, but I can only put so many on an hour show. Uh, because if I squish all these UFOs in, uh, it, a lot of it won't make sense to you. You'll, you may get confused, as I do. Next photo. Close up of it. And as you can see, uh, you got that aurora around this UFO. Uh, this is not the, the sun doing this. It, it's giving out its own power source. Quite interesting, if you ask me, because I believe this is plasma. Now, all the UFOs that I show, I believe they give off some kind of electromagnetic charge, anti-gravity charge. Um, um, as I said before, uh, uh, it could be some kind of, of uh, discharge uh, that you see in uh, even in um, uh, asteroids where when the sun hits it, uh, it, it, uh, it vaporizes the water and that's where you get your entrails. But uh, here on Earth, where they don't get the heat, uh, this is uh, a, maybe a plasma charge discharge. Um, who knows? Uh, now, I'm only guessing because I'm not an astrophysicist and I'm sure no rocket scientist, but... Uh, I've studied these uh, anomalies uh, in, on these craft so much that, uh, and I call them anomalies because I don't know what they are, uh, that um, I believe that when I say that they're giving off this or giving off that, I, I truly believe that because we can't explain it. When we, I've studied our aircraft when it's taken off, uh, Cape Canaveral, when you see these uh, rockets taken off, uh, you can see the plume. There's nothing like what they're doing here on these craft in their fantastic speeds that they carry. And so I think it's quite Im really important for me to convey as best I can to you. Um, just to let you know, um, uh, I, I was in a chemical, uh, I've been chemically damaged, so sometimes I skip a word or two or mispronounce a word. Uh, that's all because of my background. And someday I may uh, come out and explain uh, what my situation is. But I try to explain the best way I possibly can. And looking at this UFO, as we'll go on to the last uh, photo of it, um, you're going to see uh, that this UFO never changed its shape uh, throughout the, the pictures that I showed it. And uh, it's, uh, it's a nice feeling when you get that you can get uh, these objects going through our atmosphere at tremendous speeds. It's just uh, mind-boggling how they do it. And uh, I would sure love to fly one of these myself as so many... Um, fighter pilots have said. Next uh, photo is a uh, picture of a um, uh, event that's happening. Uh, as you can see, you can read it for yourself. This is uh, 
the uh, Art Walk of Pahrump.com is presenting its first annual uh, Prompt Film Festival. Now, if you want to uh, enter a, a film, uh, I'm entering one of mine in there. It's 25 minutes long. Uh, you can. It will be judged uh, by professionals. And uh, there's also a, something that's not listed here. There's going to be a car show there. Uh, quite a few cars are going to be there. So if you car, car lovers, come out and enjoy the, uh, the show. I think it's going to be a really uh, an, a great event. Uh, I'm going to be there along with the Tumblr lady. And I'll have my full line of UFO We Want to Know tumblers out there. Uh, I have a new line. It's called the Glow in the Dark. That would be coming up. But let me finish with the, this real quick. Um, this, uh, this festival is going to be, uh, like I said, for the first time. There's 50-50 uh, drawings. Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of vendors out there. And if you want to be a vendor out there, there's still time. There's a phone number uh, for you to call and you can reach them and talk to them about uh, setting up a, uh, a, a, uh, uh, a, a site there for yourselves. Uh, there's going to be a lot of vendors out there. And as I said, I'm going to be with the Tumblr lady. And I hope that uh, you come out and visit me. I'll be there for three days, by the way. And uh, all three days, you come out and talk to me. Let's talk UFO. Um, this is my, uh, uh, my glow-in-the-dark tumblers. Uh, by the Tumblr lady, and you can purchase any of these out there in the show. So uh, if you would like uh, the tumblers I have here, except for this one here, these are glow-in-the-dark tumblers, and they're, they're also for sale. This helps me out for my show because I pay for everything myself. Remember, I'm the producer, director, and, of course, I take the photos and videos, and it would really help me out. Thank you for staying with us, and I hope I see you next week. Hi, I'm Joseph the host and creator of UFO We Want to Know. Tune in every Saturday evening on KPVM Perump Channel 25.1 from 7 p.m. You'll see never before viewed videos and photos taken by myself, all over the world. Thank you for watching. UFO We Want to Know and remember, yes, they are out there.